TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu pledges to fight on until total victory is achieved over Hamas. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant emphasizes that unless a diplomatic arrangement is reached for Lebanon, the IDF will ensure the implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701 by force. The RGC reiterates its pledge to strike Israel at a time and place of its choosing. Jerusalem will do everything in its power to ensure that all of the 109 hostages who remain in Hamas captivity, both the living and those murdered by the Islamist terror group, will be returned home to Israel. In a press briefing, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Agari further emphasized that the IDF Intelligence Directorate, in close collaboration with the ISA or Shin Bet and the headquarters of the abducted and missing, working around the clock to ensure a desired outcome of retrieving all hostages back to Israel. Admiral Hagari stressed, however, that the IDF persistently prepares options for the political echelon in Jerusalem and will act in accordance with any directives given. I will not refer to the details of the negotiations. Our role, the IDF's, is one, to produce for the political level all the security alternatives, all of them, and to be creative and determined in this matter. Along with this, we need to allow the political level the scope of the decision. We will know how to implement any decision that the political echelon will make. We have information at the IDF Intelligence Directorate, the ISA, and the headquarters of the abducted and missing, and this information's job is to create a picture for us so that we may know as much as we can, a sign of life, who died, where, in relation to all over the strip. This intelligence gathering operation also requires intelligence gathering operations. Alongside this matter, we don't stop trying to create opportunities to rescue hostages alive and kidnap bodies, like we did last night. Meanwhile, along the northern front, the IDF has risen on the escalation dominance ladder versus Hezbollah, with the Iranian proxy launching over 200 rockets, anti-tank missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles toward Israel over the course of the past 24 hours alone. In contrast, the IDF conducted for a second day in a row strikes against high-value Hezbollah targets in the Bekaa Valley, destroying large quantities of Hezbollah's strategic munitions. We attacked deep in Lebanon in the Bika Valley, warehouses where Hezbollah stored large stocks of weapons in three different locations. The secondary explosions observed during the attack indicate the quantity of mini ties and weapons that Hezbollah hid in those storages. We are aware, and don't forget for a single moment, the tough daily reality of the residents of the North, who live under constant threat of gunfire. We continue to fight against the terrorist organization Hezbollah, attack targets, eliminate more senior officials, and remove threats. We operate systematically and effectively over time. Our mission is one, to ensure the safety of the residents and to return them to their homes safely. Meanwhile, at the 36th Division, which is situated along the Lebanese front, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held a situation assessment, after which he stressed to the division and brigade commanders present that Israel is shifting its attention from the Gaza Strip northward toward Lebanon. Our center of gravity is moving from south to north. We are in a gradual shift. We have more tasks in the south. We have hostages. We must bring them home. We are negotiating on this, and I believe we will succeed in reaching results. This is a very, very important matter. However, at the same time, we are looking at Hezbollah's aggression. We attack every night, both in the division sector and also in deep attacks that we carried out overnight in the Baalbek area and the Bika in general, on weapons caches that exploded there with high-quality ammunition. 
All of these are operations that on the one hand are part of routine battles, while on the other hand, these are preparations for anything that could happen. Why? Because we want to return the residents to the north. We want to return them safely. If a path opens up to do it via an arrangement, so be it. However, if such a path doesn't emerge, we will go ahead and will force it open, and this is your task. At the start, the fire and intelligence arrays will act, and then the formations of the maneuvering forces. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to highlight Israel's qualitative edge over its enemies, which are expected to face the deceptive maneuvers and overwhelming firepower of the IDF in concert with the other arms of Israel's defense establishment. Our enemies fight to the death. It has always been this way. They are ready to die in their posts. All of them. Hezbollah, Hamas, each and every one of them. But, if you throw them off balance, they don't know what to do. This is the story. This means, if you arrive from an anticipated direction, as the enemy expects of you to arrive, you will pay a price, he will pay a price, and I assume that we would ultimately overwhelm them. But if you arrive from a different direction, with a different line of thought, with the right deceptive action, the whole business gets out of balance, and we have proof of this over the years. Therefore, on the one hand we must showcase determination and persistence and adherence to the mission when you fight, and on the other hand to constantly look for the next thing, and we have great advantages over the enemy in all kinds of issues that serve us in order to create various deceptive actions. We are obliged to achieve our goals. <coughs> Minister Gallant went on to reveal that Hezbollah's death toll alongside that of its Lebanese partner Amal as well as Palestinian groups will soon reach the number of losses that they had experienced during the Second Lebanon War of 2006. Ultimately, when I look at the results, as of now, there are over 500 dead in Lebanon, to include Hezbollah, Amal, plus Palestinian organizations. We surpassed the 500 mark yesterday, which is almost the number of eliminations during the Second Lebanon War. We are doing it much more precise, much better quality, a much larger line of senior commanders from Mosin through Hezbollah's regional commanders, commander of Rajouin, brigade commanders and their counterparts. All of this is focused and is very painful for them. Meanwhile, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps spokesman Mohammed Naini in a press briefing reiterated Tehran's pledge to attack Israel, claiming that the United States and Israel are both afraid of the Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Time is available, and it is possible that the period of waiting for the response becomes longer. For now, the Zionists are experiencing the fear caused by this waiting period, and the scale of the possible attack from Iran and the resistance front, and they have to stay in this unstable situation. It is possible that Iran's response doesn't repeat previous operations. The quality of the response, the scenario, and the tools are not the same every time. Despite being far inferior on all accounts, the Ayatollah regime has yet to pay any real toll for its belligerent activities throughout the Middle East and beyond, seemingly bolstering its confidence vis-à-vis -vis the United States and its allies and partners throughout the region. Moreover, according to two intelligence sources, the Islamic Republic had recently instructed its proxies in Yemen, Iraq, as well as in Syria to prepare for an uptick of attacks against bases housing U.S. service members and other American assets throughout the Mideast. Meanwhile, at the Pentagon, Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder highlighted that the United States continues to closely monitor the volatile region. 
Separately, the Department of Defense continues to closely monitor the situation in the Middle East and take steps to mitigate the possibility of regional escalation by Iran or its proxies. The Department's recent adjustments to the U.S. military posture in the region have enabled us to bolster U.S. force protection, increase support for the defense of Israel, and to ensure the United States is prepared to respond to various contingencies. As you've heard us say previously, we remain intently focused on de-escalating tensions in the region while also remaining focused on securing a ceasefire as part of a hostage deal to bring all of the hostages home and to end the war in Gaza. General Ryder further responded to a question regarding an expected timeline for the American deployment in the CENTCOM area of responsibility, which includes the greater Middle East and the eastern part of North Africa. Well, as you know, uh, we're, we're not going to talk about operational timelines. Um, we will preserve flexibility, as we always do. Uh, and again, we'll stay focused on the uh, operational objectives that I highlighted. Um, we've had a, a significant force presence in the Middle East for a very long time, upwards of you know, 30,000 plus U.S. forces operating with partners throughout the region. Uh, and I don't foresee that changing anytime soon. While the USS Abraham Lincoln, Carrier Strike Group, and the nuclear-fueled submarine USS Georgia still in transit to the Middle East, General Ryder was asked whether the United States had enough forces to contend with any viable contingency, including a plausible regional conflagration. We already maintain uh, a significant force presence, and it's also important to understand to look beyond uh, episodic situations, right? So ensuring that we have the forces in theater uh, to respond to something if it happens now, but also ensuring we have forces in theater to be able to respond to whatever could be next in terms of potential escalation and trying to de-escalate the situation. And that requires uh, bolstering some of those capabilities. Again, one, to send a clear message, but two, to be able to respond uh, in a longer term scenario should we need to do that. Turning to the Qatari capital of Doha, where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken concluded his regional trip, that after holding an extensive meeting with Qatari State Minister Mohammed bin Abdulaziz Al Hulaifi, prior to his departure, Washington's top diplomat reiterated that Israel had accepted Washington's proposed outline for a hostage release deal, while further stressing the urgency once again for Hamas to accept the deal on the table. Um, Israel has now accepted that proposal. I heard that directly from Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. Uh, and we uh, hope and expect that Hamas will do the same. And over the coming days, we are going to do everything possible to, one, get Hamas on board with the bridging proposal, and then to make sure that both parties uh, work on and agree to necessary details of implementation that would allow everything to go forward. On the fierce urgency of now, this needs to get done, and it needs to get done in the days ahead, and we will do everything possible uh, to get it across the finish line. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, in a conversation with both members of the Tikva Forum as well as the Gvura Forum of bereaved families, reasserted his promise that their loved ones will not have fallen in vain and that Israel will continue to fight until total victory is achieved over Hamas. The first thing is to eliminate Hamas and achieve victory. We are approaching this step by step. If three months ago, before we went into Rafa, they said there is nothing that can be done, there is a lot to do. In the meantime, we have eliminated Deef and other commanders as well. We seized the Philadelphia Corridor and the Rafa crossing. We are using all necessary force to dismantle Hamas's rule and its military capability, and this is moving forward. The second thing is that we are, at the same time, making an effort to return the hostages on terms that will allow for the maximum number of hostages being released in the first stage of the deal. I say this clearly, this is an objective that I have set. However, the other thing is to preserve our strategic security assets in the face of major domestic and foreign pressure, and we are doing so. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. 
I'd like to encourage you as ever, keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hessen, wishing you an Erev Mevorach Vebatuach. And God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.